Welcome to Crossroads. A new report shows that businesses in China are seeing their profits plunge to record lows. Now, according to a new report, only 66% of U.S. businesses were profitable in China last year. And this is not just limited to the United States. Even European companies are watching their businesses fall like this in China as well. The latest development, notably, you know, it's dashing the beliefs that the market is going to improve. That's having a ripple effect, of course, through investment. But new CCP policies also that favor domestic companies, their tumbling economy with real estate and the banking crisis, and also an expanding global trade war. All of this is coming together and really taking the toll on the country. The development could also accelerate the process of companies leaving China because they're facing diminishing profits, which could likewise, again, have kind of a domino effect through investment and then to the economy again overall. Now, for U.S. businesses in China, they're especially being impacted. This is according to a new report released by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai on the business climate in China. They're saying a few factors, including increasing geopolitical pressure, China's economic slowdown, all these things are contributing to a, quote, less optimistic outlook for China. Here's some of the exact numbers about what is happening to these businesses from the American Chamber of Commerce report. It says this, only 66% of U.S. businesses were profitable in 2023, again in China. This is a record low, according to the report. It says that 47% of the respondents are optimistic about the five-year business outlook in China, while 13% of respondents rank China as their headquarters' top investment destination. Both rates are the lowest in our survey's history, ever. And notes that over two-thirds of companies are following a de-risking strategy, with 36% investing in supply chain resilience and 25% segregating China and non-China data and information. What does that mean? It means they're making sure that if the Chinese economy collapses, it doesn't destroy their business. When they say de-risking, it means they're removing the risk of being too closely tied to the Chinese economy so that as things go further down, it will not put them out of business as well, right? And when they talk about segregating the China data and the non-China data and other information, it means they're basically building two separate empires, so to speak. Uh, not to mention when they talk about, again, you know, investing in supply chain resilience, that means also think, imagine, you know, if you're working in real estate development and you need, you need iron. Uh, if you're working, for example, in some kind of computer technology and you need rare earth minerals, it means you need supply chain resilience. If the CCP cuts off the supply to something, you have other places to go. They don't see the CCP in China now as being stable. And it's a record high of 25% cut investment in China last year, but only 20% expect to do it this year. And notice the top reasons for members decreasing investment is concerns over China's, quote, slowing growth. And notice as well that opportunities in other markets are the reason why 40% of members are uh, redirecting planned investment with Southeast Asia and Indian, the Indian subcontinent being the most popular choices. They can manufacture just as cheap, just as efficiently somewhere else, why keep it in China? And that's what they're saying. It notes as well that only 22% of respondents expressed confidence in the Chinese government's commitment to further opening up their industry in the near future. Because aside from everything else, the CCP is focused on domestic production. They want Chinese companies, not American companies, not European companies, not anywhere else. They want Chinese companies. And with this trend, we also see some businesses, well, just moving out of China. The Epic Times said this, IBM has decided to follow the example of what has become a long list of American brands and close some of its operations in China. And it's that although management has remained very businesslike in its statements, right, they're trying to be diplomatic, it has clearly read the same writing on the wall as other American firms. If this is an inconvenience and an expense for the firms moving away from sometimes decades-long arrangements, it hardly helps China to lose the expertise and business acumen of these operations. 
Now, what's even more interesting is, again, this is not just an American issue. It's not just the CCP going after American businesses. This is a trend across the board. And we see this notably happening with the European businesses. There was a report that came out with very similar findings for European companies in China. This was from the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China in their latest position paper. They said this. They said the central concern for European Chamber members is China's economic slowdown. However, several other factors are dragging on business confidence, including perennial market access and regulatory barriers, <laughs> meaning the CCP is kind of cutting off their access to the markets and Chinese regulations are making it hard for them to do business there. Again, the CCP is favoring domestic companies, not foreign companies. And as well, the highly politicized business environment where the CCP is kind of bringing back more state control over economic sectors, which includes not just businesses, but also investment in banking and the whole nine yards, and also lackluster domestic consumption, overcapacity, the persistence of ambiguous rules and regulations, and the government's continued focus on national security and developing a high degree of self-reliance. They don't need nobody else. They want Chinese companies. And notes further in that a sentiment is emerging at company headquarters and among shareholders that the returns on China investment are no longer commensurate with the risks faced. It's not worth it. And notes that profit margins in China are equal to or below the global average for approximately two thirds of European chamber members. And pessimism about future profitability is at an all time high. In other words, the costs of being there are very high. The risks of being there are very high. And the benefits of being there are kind of low. There's not a lot going for it. And so that's raising the question, well, why are they there? Why are they doing business there? Why are they putting their headquarters there? Maybe they want to regard it as a market to sell products in, but do they need to be fully embedded there? That is what the question is. Now, like the writing for this has been on the wall. We pointed out previously, including on this show, the Chinese Communist Party, they were expected to announce a solution to their economic woes, right? We watched the Chinese banking crisis, the runs on the banks, people getting arrested for doing so. We watched, of course, Evergrande and all these big Chinese uh, real estate companies start to go under. We watched the CCP saying, we have a plan, right? And what happened? Well, they had their recent third plenum meeting and a top level Politburo meeting and that was expected to come out with a big announcement of the solution, right, for the Chinese economy, how they're going to save it. What happened? Well, the Chinese Communist Party came out with lofty sounding statements on how they're going to be like, you know, the future world power and so on, and all their plans of, you know, what they want to look like. But they didn't propose any actual steps to achieve that. There was no actual proposal on how to fix the problems. And, you know, it wasn't even just the China Hawks saying this. It was the mainstream news outlets. This was investment, you know, investment groups calling it out. People were noting the CCP presented no actual steps for solutions. And even then, you still had some people who were maybe hopeful. You still had some investors saying, well, you know, we think they have a plan and they're just not telling us what that is. You know, you, you got to invest to find out what it is, right? And they found out, well, they found out what it was. They found out the CCP actually does not have a plan and the plan that it does have involves pushing them out for the most part. What the CCP also did alongside of this was declared a focus again on domestic production. They have a goal stated publicly to replace even outside technology on every single system. They don't want Windows, right? They don't want American operating systems. They don't want American software. They don't want anything from any other country being used in their country that they have to rely on. And if they're relying on it, they're looking at how to replace it. They're not looking at how to buy it. Now, the important thing with this is that means that foreign businesses are facing a diminishing future in China. Now, here's more on this from the European Union Chamber of Commerce's position paper. They say the foreign business community had been looking to the third plenum of the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party for signals that at least some of these concerns would be addressed. And they say this, instead, 
The third plenum decision, again, this top-level CCP group, continues to promote investment in manufacturing as a key driver of China's economic development, albeit under the moniker New Quality Productive Forces, right? That's a CCP slogan. And they say, i.e., the aim is to increase production capacity and strategic, higher value added goods and technologies. They note the intention to step up efforts to develop a complete domestic demand system is asserted, but the document contains nothing concrete as to how consumption will be stimulated. How are they gonna make the Chinese people start spending their money and buying? That's the big question, and the CCP is giving no answers on that. And it's not just that. The CCP has been taking some pointed actions at European businesses. I'll be talking more about how China has been doing this in the international business space after I come back from a quick break. Experts agree. One of the best ways to protect against financial uncertainty is to diversify your portfolio. Learn how physical gold and silver can secure your retirement funds from today's economic challenges with a gold IRA from American Hartford Gold. You can safeguard your wealth with no penalties or taxes when you transfer your current qualifying retirement accounts. Call now and our precious metal specialists will send you a free information kit, no cost or obligation. American Hartford Gold, a trusted industry leader with an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau, has a five-star rating from thousands of happy clients. Whether you are getting physical precious metals in a gold IRA or delivered to your doorstep, we offer only the highest quality gold and silver. For your peace of mind, we also offer a no-fee buyback commitment, a low-price guarantee, along with free shipping and free insurance. So don't wait. Call the number on your screen today and secure your financial future. Welcome back. Foreign businesses are seeing record drops in profits in China. Now, this is amid the geopolitical tensions and slow growth in the Chinese economy. It's not just U.S. businesses facing this either. Even European companies are watching their profits in China get impacted. This is as China, the CCP, turns domestic focus to domestic production and a goal notably to replace basically anything they get from the outside, including technology and any kind of reliance or dependence on outside businesses. And outside countries are doing the same thing to the Chinese market. But with European businesses in particular, the CCP is taking some more pointed actions. ABC News said this, they said in August, China filed the complaint with the World Trade Organization over European Union tariffs on electric vehicles made in China. It also launched anti-dumping and subsidies investigations of European dairy products, brandy and pork exports. The tit-for-tat actions have raised fears that a trade war may break out. And as many European businesses are deciding that, uh, that their returns on investment in the world's second largest economy are not worth the risks due to issues including China's economic slowdown and a politicized business environment. Now, briefly on that, you might remember the European Union put tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. Why did they do that? Well, the CCP overproduced them. They had overproduction. They had too many of them sitting on the shelves. They needed to get rid of them, and so they wanted to dump them on foreign markets at a significant price drop. The problem with that, because Chinese businesses, many of them are subsidized by the government, especially EVs and other things like that, things they want to compete with in future markets, they want to sell them at prices that nobody can compete with because they don't need to make profits. They are propped up artificially by the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP does that, right? They cut the prices, they sell below the red line. Businesses can't compete. The CCP puts its competitors out of business. And when the competitors go out of business, the CCP then has monopoly on the entire industry. Once they have the monopoly, they can buy up their former competitors or become you know, majority investors. They then have a global monopoly within an entire sector. Now, Europe, the United States, many other countries, they don't want that happening. They want to make sure the CCP doesn't control the future of, like, you know, vehicles. They want to make sure the CCP doesn't control the future of technology that, you know, again, we're going to be needing for the world. And so they say, no, you can't have this if you're going to be subsidizing it. You can't be selling below the red line to put us out of business so you can have a monopoly. So they hit back. They made it so the CCP, CCP couldn't do it. The CCP now being very angry about that, 
is saying they're, well, we're going to do the same thing and they're going after milk or pork products and things like that. Now, for the EU as a whole, that's not that big of a deal, but for individual EU member states, some of them, that's a big market for them. And so the CCP is bypassing the EU, going to individual countries and trying to strike trade deals to get around these tariffs. And that's where things are at right now. But interestingly, the general signal, right, it seems to be that what the economy for China is going through right now, it's going to get worse. And so even aside from the trade war, there's more to it. Add to that the growing sanctions and tariffs from inside and outside, the CCP's growing role in global conflicts, think Russia, Ukraine, think Israel, think the South China Sea, Taiwan, possibly now the Arctic. And you can see where the trend is heading. Now, back to that European Union Chamber of Commerce position paper. Here's how the European businesses are reacting to that. And, you know, perhaps it may be a bit hopeful where they're coming from. Their recommendations they're giving for China. The European Union Chamber of Commerce paper says this. They're asking the CCP to, quote, enact legislation to establish a truly level playing field between foreign and Chinese enterprises, improve the predictability and reliability of China's regulatory environment by ensuring legislation is specific and clearly defined, and drafted in consultation with industry, refrain from erratic policy shifts, and allow reasonable transition times before implementing new or amending existing policies or regulations permit access to legitimate sources of data and business intelligence that companies need to make well-informed investment decisions, refrain from punishing companies for their actions, for the actions of their home governments. So what they're doing is they're kind of like asking the CCP to not be the CCP. The feasibility of these recommendations in communist China are like, it's basically slim to none. The CCP is going to accept this. The Chinese Communist Party is not going to change its nature. The CCP is not going to back off on its entire economic plan, which favors domestic production. The CCP is not going to adopt, you know, clear and straightforward laws because it uses those gray areas as a way to control foreign businesses, to make them over-censor, for example. And it's not going to back off all the international trade wars and other conflicts growing just because a few businesses that it doesn't even seem to want right now are complaining about it. Now look, the CCP, the trend right now, is actually going in the opposite direction. The Chinese Communist Party is becoming more aggressive. And not only that, the CCP's priorities are not on these European businesses. The priorities are on domestic production, independence from foreign markets. They don't want to be reliant on anything outside of China. And so the likelihood that the CCP is going to adopt the demands of these European companies, it's about slim to none. But what's also important, the trends we're watching will likely compound with each other. And the important factor here is investment. If businesses leave China because of poor business, what message does that send to investors? I'll be talking about this more only on EpicTV.com. So if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, X Rumble, there's a link in the description below. Click on that. You'll get access to the rest of this episode as well as our whole library of shows and our hard-hitting documentaries and issues that matter, like the CCP's 100-year plan to defeat the United States. The Chinese Communist Party is one of the biggest threats to America. They're using things like propaganda, video games, entertainment, movies, culture to subvert and influence the next generation. If you'd like to find out more about what the CCP is plotting against this country, watch my documentary, The Final War, The 100-Year Plot to Defeat America. You can find the link for that in the description below. And I'll show you all the trailer before we go exclusively to epictv.com for the rest of this episode. I'll see you there. The greatest threat facing the United States is the CCP. The Epic Times investigation team had studied the CCP for years, but what we uncovered was yielding evidence beyond our imagination. With Chairman Mao, with the Prime Minister, our talks have been characterized by frankness. The Clinton administration said, oh, don't worry about it. This will be a poison pill for China. China's strategic goal is to make sure that the U.S. has four enemies, and one of them must be a terrorist group. We are giving of our life's blood 
so that the Chinese Communist Party can survive and thrive. 